Starfish International is a girls education program in Lamin village in the Gambia in West Africa. Our primary thrust is uh, the education of girls, but also with added the education of boys. And the reason why is because gender equity cannot be realized unless girls and boys work together in partnership. So um, the ways we do the education of girls, like I said, one is the inclusion of boys for discussions, uh, for partnership, for projects. But also it's through not just academic education, but a strong spiritual foundation and vocational training and skills training. So in this day and age, particularly with the coming of COVID, it's very, very obvious that those who have skills that they can rely on and lean on are the ones that are better off than even those that just have an academic education, for example. Um, our main issue with education is that there needs to be that spiritual component that is manifest in material means. And the way we do that is service to our communities. So one of my uh, favorite quotations says, my calamity is my providence. Outwardly, it's fire and vengeance. Inwardly, it's light and mercy. And so when we look at something like the lack of educational opportunities for girls, the approach at Starfish International is to not look at just the calamity of it, but also the light and mercy within it. So this is our approach. How do we do social action in a way that spiritual and material development work in coherence? And how do we achieve that coherence in action so that people actually see what the education of girls can do within a community? One of the ways to do that is to put the girls in front of them and show them if you give the girl an opportunity to have an education or to have a skill, this is what they can do to improve the community. The reason why I start the skill center because I have seen that many people did not value skills. And uh, we need skills because without skills, we can't do anything. So I uh, wanted the skills, uh, the skills to expand. So I started with gardening. I love gardening, making vegetables and sell them. And we have the business center. The business center is run, uh, running. And I, I decided for us to have the skill center where we will help girls in the community to learn skills, different skills, um, with like sewing, hairdressing, uh, pastry, arts and craft. I have seen that the skill center, the students that come here to learn the skill center from the community are really doing well. They are. Um, trying with their skills and it makes me happy to see them learning skills. Um, recently our grade 9 students were called to go back um, to school after about three months of being at home and typical of Starfish International we knew we had to prepare them into going back to school and also to basically give them the language um, you know that they need to be able to advocate for themselves. So um, we actually called them back here and one of the methods we used was um, doing role plays and um, knowing that we live in a culture that struggles with social distancing, it would be really hard for them to protect themselves and to, you know, um, support other people to do the same. So um, one of the things we did was have discussions around scenarios that were likely to come up when they went back to school, um, such as how they could deal with a case where, you know, if one of their friends want to hug them, um, instead of embracing the um, individual or you know, avoiding them in a way that would cause um, some sort of conflict, they could actually hold their hand and take them to the side and explain, you know, why um, for now we cannot hug and why we need to stay away from each other. Um, as well as, you know, how they could continue wearing their mask, because we know that um, wearing mask is something that is new here. And sometimes people tend to see um, some of us that are always wearing the mask as those who think they're better than them, or perhaps I am thinking that you're having coronavirus and that is why I'm having the mask. So we needed to have that discussion to let the students know that no matter what, they need to continue wearing their um, mask, as well as how they can have conversations with other people. 
um, knowing that you know we need to contextualize our education and our awareness is something that um, I think as part of the staffist approach always makes our community work um, I think effective. So when you look at something like COVID-19 and you think it's a calamity, which it is, you can also look at that calamity and say, how can it help make the lives of women and girls better? And the way it can do that in our situation, there are several examples that you will hear through this video. One of those examples is just giving the girls the education that they need in terms of uh, prevention and having them implement that within the community. So we teach the girls how to make soap and how to make masks and how to make hand washing stations that they can monitor and teach the community with. And then we have them go into their homes and do exactly that. When we started educating our students about COVID-19 and also setting up hand washing stations, by then the Gambia wasn't affected. But Staff is International as an organization, we were able to have a week-long training on COVID-19 and things that our students should do to prevent themselves and their community people. Our students were able to go back into their homes and their communities to teach them about what they know about COVID-19. And they also set up hand washing stations in their homes and communities. I must say it was a struggle for our students because it was something that our community people were not used to. Some people love, laughed at them and some actually think our students were crazy. But for me, I think that was something that the community really learned from. Because when we had COVID cases, a lot of people in the community were able to set up stations in their homes and their community. And I personally, I must say, that was because of the knowledge that our students were able to learn and also going back into their communities, they were also able to learn from our students. As the world is moving virtually, um, one of the ways we actually wanted to reach the skill center students is um, to the video recording. So I am um, the media coordinator at Starfish International and uh, I was able to work with the skill center teachers and then they came on um, separate days at Starfish International and recorded lessons of cookery lessons, they recorded um, math lessons, they recorded sewing lessons that they can send to their students so that the students can actually um, watch those videos and practice while they're actually at home. I know that during this COVID-19 um, pandemic, people are moving like um, all into virtually and having online classes. So this is, this is one way that Staffish International um, is actually using to reach these, these um, skill center students. One of the things we're doing here at Staff is International in order to help mitigate or combat the spread of COVID-19 is the provision of masks through our skill center staff. So we decided to give some of these masks to the people that we believe needed most. And some of the beneficiaries are the security personnel and the workmen because we believe that they are most vulnerable due to the high contact they have with people. So giving them masks will serve as a form of protection from having contact with the virus. As a sickle cell warrior, um, things got really personal for me during this um, time of COVID-19 because um, the life of the doctors that were um, caring for me and were treating me um, was in danger. And as Starfish as an organization, um, we were able to use the girls we have in our skill center to be able to make masks and donate it to frontline workers that are in the hospitals with soap. This mask and soap were meant to help them protect themselves and to protect their patients as well, so that um, they will always be there to help and keep in the fight of COVID-19. So the other stories you will hear in this video will be about mutual support, would be about community action, would be about reading our realities and looking at what we have and how can we work from a position of abundance instead of a position of deficit. So that as we get your support, we are also able to support others and support you back and share the beautiful stories that come out of even situations of hardship. Staff is International sold 750 marks to Soul Health. So Soul Health is an organization that is working towards a fighting against COVID-19. So these masks were donated by Soul Health to the Gambian public, uh, transportation drivers and apprentices. Uh, this is a good initiative that Soul Health have taken because uh, the public transportation drivers are like people that come in contact with a lot of uh, Gambian 
people. So if they are like really protected, uh, a lot of people will be protected from COVID-19. So when we talk about this coherence that brings about spiritual and material development and how that manifests in social action, um, we look at how we socialize those concepts within the communities. So how do you socialize the concept of gender equity? How do you socialize the concept of equality in general, right? And so one of the ways we socialize the concept of equality, for example, is that when people think about aid, they usually think about aid and support coming from outside into Africa. But then when this calamity happened with COVID-19 at Starfish International, we were thinking, okay, we're making masks, but how can we send some of those masks to our supporters in the US to help them protect themselves? So you see, it flips the concept on its head and shows that today somebody might be in a position to help, tomorrow somebody else might be in a position to help. So that's one way to socialize the concept. Doing role plays as part of our education um, during the COVID-19 pandemic is not new to Starfish International. Um, I remember when the pandemic started, um, one of the things we did was, you know, doing role plays because we wanted to see how we could work from within the culture and to look at you know, what was practical in the education that we were doing. So, for example, one of the things we did was to role play how we could um, politely turn away guests, given that this culture um, does home visits a lot. So we had to look at how, for example, if someone comes to see your family, how you could politely talk to them to make sure that um, they are not seeing the people, such as older people or younger ones or people with, um, you know, health complications that were vulnerable to COVID-19, how you could talk to them in a polite way and to educate them as well. We also looked at how we could, you know, talk to people about eating in, um, in separate bowls and, um, isolating themselves as well because we live in communities where everything is communal and people like to come together to do things. So these were some of the ways we looked at role playing. And I think our students um, have gone back to school, but they are also protecting themselves and protecting other people, reflecting on um, what we do, did with them during the role plays. So thank you for your support from Starfish International. We look forward to working with the Mona Foundation for many years to come.